I'm going to do this completely from scratch so you can learn my technique and steal from me and do it better. I think I'm going for a uh, steampunk ray gun. If I don't create a ray gun piece of art once, maybe twice a month, I start to feel a little wonky. I'm out of whiskey, so I'm going to have to get a refill before we get going. Okay, so I'm going to start this. Uh, I'm just going to do a... Uh, Eight and a half by eleven. And I think I'm gonna go horizontal. So I am using a Wacom tablet. If anyone knows, this is all done utilizing layers. I'm gonna paint over this background. Actually I'm gonna give I feel like this one's gonna be a bit monochromatical. But I'm gonna give it a a, a dark I'll probably keep it in brown tones. Give it a dark background. So I can see what I'm doing here. This is when I'm doing robots and ray guns. And that sort of thing in Photoshop. I'm coming together pretty quickly because a lot of it is just shapes, circles and squares, and then you start manipulating them. I'm not sure. I don't have a sketch for this at all. But... With Steampunky, I'm going to start with a sort of tan shade, and I do a lot of duplicating and transforming the duplications. I feel like there's going to be a lot of diodes in this particular guy. Hi, Olga. Let me know if you can hear me okay. I know I'm always asking that, but... <laughs> it seems like every time I do this, I have a completely different setup. And now that I look at that, I want it to face the other way here. That's going to be the back of it. This might be a hybrid of something sort of steampunky and uh, atomic age. going to be a lot of lot of circles. It's going to look a bit like a planetarium. For those of you who didn't tune in last night, we did a live St. Paddy's Day, fairly inebriated Blarney cast about Irish myths and legends. So I'm a bit mellow today. <laughs> I think a lot of people are mellow the day after uh, St. Paddy's Day, even if it's a hold up inside all night St. Paddy's Day. This is not going to be terribly exciting, um, at least for, while I'm sketching, because like I said, I don't have a, uh, I don't really sketch, I just kind of try things and keep it going. But I don't have anything in mind for this guy yet. So I'll be sort of feeling it out. Like a call map. Yeah, I bet this one's a, a bit more, uh, I mean, I have the microphone right here. I'm a bit more calm. When I'm doing the live paintings of the uh, canvas paintings, that whole process is a bit more chaotic. And I'm standing up, and I was using my iPhone to film those. This I've got my studio mic, or one of my little studio mics. So, it will be a bit more... I suppose ASMR, <laughs> which could go either way, as we've learned on the podcast. Uh, I suppose I should probably get my handle shape in place. That's a big part of the shape of a ray gun. Deciding on... That's not the filter that I heard. The, let's see. This is a very very new update of Photoshop. It's the latest version. And I'm not crazy about most of the updates. I suppose anytime something changes that you're used to. 
but I don't know the shortcuts to all of these little like I want that to uh, jut out a little bit disproportionately but it's getting close all the fun of this is in the end really when you start adding the texture and the shading this is gonna be a fairly quickish one but it all really comes together at the end what did everyone think of uh, quarantine St. Patty's Day it was odd wasn't it I like that a lot of people are streaming I'm not gonna go on and on about the virus tonight <laughs> I personally am sick to death of the topic and until there's major news I think it's time to move on to talking about something else. Like how we're all screwed. See what I mean? This makes no sense in the steampunk world. But it's my drawing, as Bob Ross might say. It's your world. See, I can't help it. Bob Ross is going to come up every time I do one of these. These little shapes, these ray gunny shapes, might be <laughs> what it's all about for me in terms of, especially uh, atomic age shapes, curves, and design. But I'm trying to match the steampunk thing to some degree, so I gotta keep reminding myself not to get too carried away with those. Just like little heat elements. I think is uh, what those are supposed to be. Like something you'd see from an old computer. But you can't get carried away with them. Happy little beams indeed, Meg. How are things in Canada? I hear that they're... Uh, are they closing the border? Did I hear that right? I feel like... Uh, we talked about this to some degree last night in the podcast, but I feel like we're past <laughs> this seemingly nonsense period we're in where we're just kind of nickel and, and, nickel and diamond it, as it were. And now I think we're all hunkered down to some degree, and it's time to just take it to the next level. Speaking of next level... I'm really getting carried away with these diodes. But these digital paintings, I mean, you can see how fast. This would have taken me, even as simple as this is, this would have taken me <laughs> half an hour at least just to paint this solid base color. And then you just start filling the stuff in. So it's really easy to... I used to use... The, the reason I got into digital painting was that I would use it as a way to sketch for an analog painting then I would take those ideas and it's a great quick and free if you already have the software way of playing around with color and contrast and composition so you don't have to waste time with your paints and then you can transfer that to canvas I do th I still do that but at some point I developed uh, an interest in utilizing digital for what it could do that analog couldn't do. So it wasn't just a tool to heighten my analog experience. Uh, let me take a look at the comments here. Yeah, the border is closed. for Wow. I wonder how that works. So Canada is moving on slowly, but... I work in the grocery store, and you'd think the end of days are coming. Yeah, people are really talking like the end of days are coming. It's definitely, uh, <laughs> it's something else. Now, this is where the shapes, now I'm going to go on to a new layer here, because I feel like that's a pretty good base, and what do we do that in like 10 minutes? I like how I say we, I include you guys in, we're in it together. Now I can put... Um, there's probably better ways of doing this, but 
what I like to do is sort of overshoot these shapes so I can go back in and uh, I can merge that back down I guess and then with more shapes <laughs> but negative shapes I can start cutting in these interesting little contours this is another thing I like about digital over analog by the way I, I far prefer analog painting the process of analog painting and the final result but I did uh, develop a style uh, not that long ago of anal uh, digital paintings that kind of hit some of those notes that the analog paintings did. Let's see, let me back that up a bit. Oh, that's not quite. Actually, I think the two, I kind of like that shape even though it's not terribly practical. But, uh, and these are too fat. And I love that you can just come in here <laughs> and just decide, you know what, those are too big. And then just shrinky dink. Oh, see, that's what I mean. I'm, that should have just done that. <laughs> the The shortcuts are different on this newer Photoshop. So I've got some. And when you're used to doing, I do almost nothing but shortcuts. That's how I'm able to do this so quickly. I'm not going up into the menus and, you know, digging through all that stuff. I've learned all the shortcuts that I need to, to make. And when they change that, I don't know why they don't think that's a big deal. I don't think they should go changing that. Anywho, well, that looks a little silly. But yeah, sketching in Photoshop is a really quick and easy way to get some ideas. And again, I'd still be painting this part if this was analog okay I usually make a, a wacky trigger if you look at all of my ray guns <laughs> they, they're usually not terribly practical like oh, who's holding that um, oops like what hand works there although it's kind of an interesting point who's to say that this is a human's ray gun uh, now let's see, I put that on a different layer so I could come back down here and sort of come inside that ring there, inverse it, and I should be able to erase what's behind it. Oops, I went out. I hate these fuzzy erasers. I saw Fuzzy Eraser open for Beck in, uh, I think, 96. Any new good documentaries, people? Everyone's watching. It's funny. I would have guessed that social media would be kind of crazier than ever right now, but it doesn't seem to be. It seems to be kind of quiet. Sarah thinks it's because everyone has to spend time with their families, <laughs> which I think is a good guess, actually. Um, let me see before I lock into this if I can I'm going to have to learn that new shortcut because I'm not well, that's kind of working but this is the time I'm finally getting caught up on Stranger Things I'm about to put together an audio book uh, I guess project I want to use some of my local actor pals. You know, there's all these books that are in the public domain. Great books. I mean, most of the classics are in public domain. So you can do whatever you want with them. You can put you can put them out with your own cover with absolutely no changes made to them except for the, you know, different artwork. You can add your own annotation or commentary, your own uh preface. Uh but what I want to do is start putting out these audio books of public domain books. Like, I really want to do Dracula uh, or, you know, Frankenstein. Start with some of the classic horror books and not necessarily act them out like, 
Uh, I'm going to merge that down. I'm happy with that weird. You see what I mean? Like this is all over the map in terms of design. Uh, design. A little bit of steampunk, a little bit of Flash Gordon, Adam, uh, Atomic Age stuff. It can be whatever we want because it's our happy little world. So if anybody's listening and uh, you want to be involved with that, what I want to do is I, I basically want to have people, I don't know, somewhere between LibriVox and a full-on, like, produce. Because I don't, I don't think I want to do such a project to where they're all, like, fully produced. Like, uh, you know, audio dramas. Although I do want to do some of that, like a radio drama. <laughs> I've always wanted to do. I've actually written scripts to do that. I've just never put it together. And because it's, of the few times that I've tried, it occurred to me like, wow, this is a big project. But audiobooks, just reading them, just good readers with good voices. And, uh, you know, maybe a little dramatic music here and there. Not through the whole thing. And maybe a little bit of sound effects, again, here and there, but not through the whole thing. I really think that'd be a fun project. Just a series of, you know, Radar Station Presents, public domain shenanigans. I've been printing a lot of public domain stuff in the Comet. As filler, I'm pretty much set on doing a 32-page magazine every month. But because I'm set on that, there are months where... I don't quite have 32 solid pages of content, so I'll usually go on archive.org or uh, just look up public domain comics or periodicals or old advertising. It's fun to print those. But i also been putting out these little zines of public domain. Like I put one together of Oscar Wilde's poetry. And it's like all of that, almost all of that, is in the public domain. You can put out your own books filled with this stuff and a lot of people aren't doing that which is strange to me maybe they don't even know it's an option but anyway if you want to be involved with that let me know and I'm looking to get cracking I really want to do I think if we start Dracula right now we can have a pretty slick production in time for an October release you know just as we're starting to crawl out of. <laughs> I refuse, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm hopeless, hopelessly optimistic about this thing, but I really refuse to believe the latest projections that school won't be in session, or school may be out of session as long as the entire year, <laughs> like the entire school season. I refuse, I refuse to believe that. I mean, we've never taken measures like this with anything. So we don't know how, I guess we don't know how successful it's going to be. We definitely don't know how unsuccessful. Okay, now this is starting to look a little ridiculous with these electrodes, so I better back off. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the overall design, except now this looks a little wonky. So... Um, you see what I mean? This is like, <laughs> you get busy drawing, and then you look at it, and like, what, what hand fits that? And again, it doesn't necessarily need to be a human hand. This is likely not a piece of equipment that <laughs> we have here on the Earth. I'm going to see if I can get away with cutting that back and just painting some of that in without having to redo the whole thing again. But... That's the fun of the design of anything sci-fi-ish. It's all made up. I mean, prove me wrong. You prove <laughs> there's no paw in the universe that that wouldn't fit. Oh, I kind of like just dropping that on it and making it fat. That's almost matching the bottom shape. Yeah. That'll at least give me enough to work with here. It's all about layers. Oops. Speaking of which. Turn that back on. Uh, 
like I said, this new, <laughs> brand new version of Photoshop is kind of irritating me. Like driving a new car, even when it's shiny and new and you can appreciate all the fun things. It's like, where is all the stuff that I just can reach without looking? I don't like that angle. And I don't know why so many of these software companies feel like they can't ever just give it a break for a while. What is... Oh, okay. See, like that. <laughs> Was it a box I should not have been in? <laughs> I'm going to move on without comment on that. All right. So, and what's nice about that is once everything's flattened, if you don't, you know, you can always change the angle a little bit or the the curve if you had any kind of depth to it at all, which I don't. So, this is going to be straight forward. So, before I add any of the details and all that fun stuff, I'm just going to get in here and start shading it. I do have a video up on my one of my YouTube accounts of me inking an entire page from Edgar Roo. And basically doing Edgar Roo is where I learned all these shading and texturing techniques because for the first year I was drawing them with ink on paper. Like I'm drawing right now with the Wacom tablet. And it's still... I mean, I've gotten much better with it, but it still just doesn't have the feel that you're used to with an analog pen. But then you would end up with all these relatively useless unrendered drawings. And it was just, it seemed wasteful. You couldn't sell them. No one wanted Like if you're doing like a, a fully rendered comic page those are works of art people will buy them even if you're not anybody of any significance I'm gonna have to go back and fix that I didn't mean for that to be right now it looks like those electrodes are sticking up out of that barrel so I'm gonna bring that forward just by re redrawing them separate layer Sometimes you can get away with one layer for everything. But as you'll soon see, it, it doesn't really work when you're trying to do any kind of realistic shading. So now that that's all on a separate layer, I can come in there and zoom way up. You can see they don't quite cover, but I'm not too worried about that. There they go. And then you can individually, I don't like this. Yeah, there we go. You really got to play around with your uh, your range up here when you're burn. I'm, the way that I'm shading here, I'm not using the paint tool. I'm using the burn tool, which just darkens it. And it's pretty wild. You can see it's not super smooth or super uh, consistent. I like that. I think that looks that looks better. And I just want to burn these edges in so that the that's a little too much. So that it looks like they're I want them to look like uh, you know they're roundish. You can also do a lot of this with the filters in here, like in the layer palette. You can get in here and play with bevel and emboss and you know shadows and shading and uh, stuff like that sometimes that will work for you but almost never <laughs> i mean it's just so you can customize it of course but no it doesn't want to oh there it goes but those will 
like when I'm doing little suction cups on octopuses, <laughs> those are that's a gold mine for just the a tiny bit of a like a divot in the middle of the cup and then a little bit of a shadow casting on the tentacle. That's a really good way to utilize those filters. And of course drop shadows if you're if you got the right situation, that's the way to go instead of painting them. So this is all going to look pretty ridiculous for a while until it gets more rendered. And then even at the end, it probably won't look quite right until I put some filters on it. And I'll show you how I do all my filters. I overdo it. I put <laughs> these grainy sort of old paper textures on almost every everything I do, all my flyers. Now, so that was all burned in. And you can see it's already starting to kind of look coppery and with a little more texture and a little metallic. But I overdid it a little bit in my estimation. So I'm going to come back in here with what is the opposite of the burn tool, which is the dodge tool. And if I just do it across, you can see that it, it looks like an eraser there because it's set so strong, but it's not. It's actually just taking that information and lightening it back up. So if you hold the shift key down, it'll be perfectly straight when you go down. And then you can start getting, uh, that's a little too thick, a nice straight highlight. Now it's looking a little cleaner. And that's what you do to the whole thing. I'm still getting some of that background. I'm just going to cut those off. It's my world. I'll cut them off if I want. Um, make sure I'm not missing any comments. Oh, I am missing comments. I don't like how this doesn't auto-scroll for me. Something. <laughs> Human ray gun open for soft cell in the mid 80s. Wow. Tain in love. Welcome back, Emily. We sleepy. No box jokes for you. Yeah. Like I said, I think everybody's a little sleepy. What did you all do for. I want to know how everyone handled the very first St. Patrick's Day shut in. I think that's a fascinating thing that we experienced last night. <laughs> one of the biggest going out, one of the biggest social nights of the year, right? I mean, you either don't care about St. Patrick's Day or you're typically going out. I feel like... One thing that I, I'm... <laughs> Having a hard time understanding is how many people are doing these quarantine parties. They're like, hey, we're all holed up together. So come on over. It's like, well, that... <laughs> I think you're missing a key part of the overall quarantine equation. It's not a quarantine if you invite folk over. I think the people that are having the hardest time here might not necessarily be senior citizens. They might be socialites. <laughs> I think they might be the ones to die first. I kind of tease. I see a lot of drama. A lot of a lot of dramatic posts about when will I get to go out and see everybody again? It's going to be a long spring. But I like that everyone's figuring out that, you know, things like live streaming and podcasts. There's 100 podcasts started this week. I guarantee it. Not all going to be good, but if they're people you know, it's kind of a fun way to feel connected. Again, I'm doing overkill on all of this, but I think when I, the final look for this thing, I want it to sort of look like it was almost like an Old West wanted poster in terms of quality. 
you drank with us last night. I mean, you know, we should have at some point come up with a drinking game. <laughs> but honestly, it, you'd never know it because these things are so simple and so commonplace. <laughs> but I spent so much of this past week just trying to get all this software dialed in so we could even do the podcast with, uh, you know, a, a good a good sounding live podcast with an easy way for everyone to comment. And I thought, well, th- the best place to do that would be Facebook, but I couldn't, couldn't find a good quality way to do that. So I just spent a few days playing around with all this new software. So I didn't really have time to get too creative with that podcast, but I was happy with how it turned out. It always works out. That's a funny thing is even when I feel like maybe I'm coming a little light, and I did quite a bit of research for it, but, you know, for being like our first real live um, podcast like that, I feel like maybe I came in a little light, but the guys always, <laughs> the guys always bring, and then when we have the ability for you to uh, comment, that really adds it, uh, a nice texture, and gives us content. Uh, yeah, I like this better than YouTube as well. We don't, we don't have that many followers over in, on YouTube yet. Uh, as we build that up, it'll make more sense to stream there. And I think you can set it up to just, well, of course, you can just post the link on Facebook, but I think you can actually set it up to live stream in a few places all at once. But, all right, let's back it up and see what we got. Now you can start to see uh, some of those major differences. It's really already starting to look coppery. And I've got quite a bit of texturing to add to it. Outdoor party, lots of space, bring your own flask, mask, and teepee. Yeah, I don't know. I think that every time we all get together, it's going to be hard to really adhere to that, right? Because how do you not see somebody you haven't seen in a while, especially in this wacky time, and not give them a hug or a handshake? Just the kind of like knee-jerk reactions to social engagements. But I think that we're probably pretty darn close to a... uh, a full-on lockdown, a, uh, what do they call it, shelter-in-place, like uh, San Francisco is looking at right now. I think New York might be looking at doing that, too. Nudge, nudge. Is that, uh, oh, is, is Sunshine having scandalous parties? Are you uh, <laughs> you telling tales out of school? You throwing people under the bus? Okay, I guess I better save this one. <laughs> wow. I'm usually really, really good at saving shit. But, ray gun. Like, I kind of like, I feel like when I'm painting analog, I control S. <laughs> like, I just instinctively want to save it. I feel like I control S in my sleep. All right, I'm going to get a bit more whiskey. 20 seconds. I'll be right back. Did you guys know that they have old Jeopardy episodes on Netflix? Like, I I always see them plug in, you know, the ones from, like, the last few seasons. But I just discovered that they've got old ones. I don't know what it is about old game shows, but I love... Like, I feel like I would have been so happy as a set designer <laughs> on a game show in the 70s all the way to maybe like the mid 80s i i just feel like that's part of what inspired my 
aesthetic and design preferences. All those old brown, like everything was brown and orange. Now everything's blue. <laughs> blue and bold red. But back in the 70s, especially game shows, so much glorious brown and orange. Can neither confirm nor deny. All right, well, I'll I'll let you uh, off the hook. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, it's like... It, at some point, they are going to have to start really reinforcing the whole stay home thing. So right now, they're just kind of implying that we should stay home, right? <laughs> I listened to the governor. I, I said I wasn't going to talk about the virus. God, it's hard to not. What else is there to really talk about, I suppose? But um, it does seem like not much news. They're talking about some financial aid. And this is like, if anyone that didn't hear the podcast, I, I think I said this podcast last night. I feel like, I think we can all get behind these extreme measures they're asking us to do if the government and the banking system, if they're all willing to do something equally as insane, <laughs> like putting a freeze on everybody's mortgage. Or rent, or bills in general. I know that's easier said than done, and I don't know how it, how you go about doing it. But figure it out. That's your job. If our job is to stay home <laughs> and close our businesses, and the, the, yeah, then you have to you have to take care of us. And I know a lot of people get weird about talking about the government taking care of us, but. This is nuts. And if we're heading into some sort of new era of governing or financial structure, I'm not terribly opposed to that at this point. <laughs> As someone who has worked his arse off, like almost to the bone, there is a butt bone, right? Uh, and I have almost nothing to show for it except some experiences and meeting a lot of great people. I don't know if this whole American dream thing <laughs> that I've been promised is as easy and as available to as many people as we've been promised. But I, th the problem is that everyone's so afraid of these isms. If we can stop talking about isms and just focus on doing something that makes sense, especially if there's money enough to do it and resources enough to do it, drop the words that end in ism and just help people that need help. Especially when there's so much... There's a disgusting amount of money <laughs> out there just going to nowhere when it could really help a lot of people. I'm not even talking about in times of emergency. I don't know. Again, I'm strangely optimistic about this whole thing on a lot of levels. I know everyone wants to panic and fear monger, but on the other side of this, it could be it could be a, a better world. Today is a yellow orange day. Wow, I haven't thought about that in a long time. Uh, no spoilers. Does anyone know what show? I mean, no, no, looking it up. I should say. Does anyone know what show that song is from? I used to sing it at all my Bloody Oranges shows. I think I even recorded a couple of versions of it over the years. It's a pretty song. Maybe I'll... <laughs> I wonder if that's... It's got to be copyrighted. I could probably play it. Let me find it. I'll play a little bit of it. I, wait, Sarah, do you honestly know that song? <laughs> I've never met anyone that just knew that song. I found the record, and I won't, again, I'm going to give you a chance to answer <laughs> a piece of trivia. I found that record, the soundtrack. I'll, it's a TV show from the 70s, late 70s, early 80s. And I found the soundtrack for it on vinyl at Handy Randy's. <laughs> 
and it was one, I don't know, it was probably the, when I was really getting into vinyl, I was, what, 14, so that must have been, well, in the early 90s, and I was like, I used to watch this show, oh, I showed you it, yeah, fun to not have a memory, <laughs> well, I was impressed, but yeah, it is a good song, um, it's a catchy song. Good harmonies. All right, I'm starting to uh, get a little, a little Bernie here. Speaking of Bernie, did I see right? Did Sanders drop out of the the race today, or is it wishful thinking from certain elements? All right, I love this. I love when you have something that's fully rendered on one side and then half unrendered. I don't know why I find that satisfying. It's like, look at all your work paying off. Oops. I'm starting to uh, suspect that we aren't going to have any Olympics this year, and that really bumps me out because it, it might surprise you... <laughs> I probably don't read as the world's biggest sports fanatic, but I love me some Olympics. Like, I'm obsessed with the Olympics. Uh, I download the app. I watch every little thing. I keep up on all the badminton. <laughs> curling, of course. We all love curling now. Um, I just love all of it. I mourn it when it goes away. So if it doesn't come around at all this year... Uh, where is it, by the way? God help us if it's anywhere in China. I don't think it could. Actually, I think it's Japan. Can someone look it up real quick? I think this year is supposed to be Japan. And where are we at? We must be at the... Well, yeah, we're at the Summer Olympics. So it would be going on now. Don't guess that's going to go through. It's crazy that March Madness is not happening. I don't watch a ton of sports, but, man, I love me some Olympics. All right, what are we looking at here? Tokyo, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How is Japan doing, by the way? I haven't heard anything about them for being so close to the epicenter of this entire thing. Man, a hard time selecting the right thing. I love how realistic that's starting to look. Very minimal effort. How could a super fan not know? Oh, you're right. Well, you know, it's been a weird year, Emily, as you know. <laughs> uh, I didn't. One of the sports that I love to watch is the Tour de France. Didn't watch that last year either. Radar station stole my life. <laughs> there's no way, there's no other way to say it. It was everything. It was all I had time, money, or effort to put into. Yeah, it was very strange for it to be gone, but it would be gone anyway now. Funny thought. These stimulus packages that are coming. If all they're going to do is send a $1,000 check, which I'll cash, don't get me wrong, and I'll be thankful for it, but that ain't going to swing it. Like I said, if they're going to keep asking us to make these huge, life-changing, economy, <laughs> freezing... Town changing, like, uh, like think of how different our towns are going to be after all of this. There's no way, I'd, even with help, there's no way all of these little businesses are surviving. It's just a question of which ones will weather the storm, which ones will get the most benefits, I suppose. But they put a freeze on everybody's utilities, everybody's mortgages. I think they could do it. 
I think they could find a way if they really wanted to. And these are the most powerful people. These are the ones with all the money and all the power to make the decisions. I feel like they would have a vested interest if they were footing the bill or losing the money that they would normally be getting, these payments. I feel they like they would be even more <laughs> passionate to fix it. Thanks, Emily. I'm digging it. Uh, I'm starting to think that this is not going to be the ultimate background color, though, because I don't know how dark I want to go go with these edges. It is strange to me that I think that I maybe I said this at the beginning. I was definitely thinking it that I feel like social media is slower than normal. I mean, I. Just doesn't seem to be much engagement anyway. Maybe people are on and they're just not talking. Maybe they're avoiding the news. Maybe they're bummed out and they're just drinking wine and playing board games. <laughs> Which is what that's not a bad way to be spending all this time. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll buy that. I'm watching a lot of musicians make music live over streaming and I feel like it's a lot of things that we should have been doing all along some of them have had some success but I don't feel like the numbers are weird like I feel like everyone should be online right now <laughs> maybe they're just all in Facebook stuff Oops. which goes back to my earlier question I'm looking for documentaries especially some good documentaries that have come out. And don't suggest Don't F With Cats. I ain't watching that. <laughs> Can't do it. There is a new documentary on the National Enquirer. I think it's called Scandalous, which I'm really excited to see. I've seen one documentary on it. It's a fascinating story. Like, If you didn't know already, the mob is related to how the National Enquirer came to be. And before they got onto salacious, like, soap opery details with politicians and celebrities and fake stories like Elvis uh, being in love with the Martian, before all that, their bread and butter was violence. Like, uh, you know, photos of Jane Mansfield's crash site. Um those exploitation-y kind of things. Automobiles were... <laughs> powerful and fast automobiles were just kind of becoming a thing. But the most fascinating part of that story to me, as anyone who's tried marketing and any kind of business play, they... the <laughs> You know how we see the National Enquirer and all these tabloids in the checkout aisle... Well, when supermarkets were a brand new thing in the 50s and 60s, that's when the tabloids, that's when the National Enquirer started popping up. They were like, how do we get these things in front of the most people for the least amount of money? Some genius <laughs> at that company noticed that supermarkets were becoming a thing. And they're like, there is this black wall right in front of the checker. You got to stand there usually for at least for a little bit. Uh, you know, there's a pack of gum, <laughs> some chapstick, whatever. And then this whole wall, they bought that real, that real estate as if it was a parcel of land. They went to every major supermarket chain and bought that wall space. <laughs> and overnight, they were selling millions of copies. Uh, that is such a brilliant approach to getting your product out there. It's like, people are stuck here. Usually the people, especially during that time, the people going and doing the shopping were female, you know, oftentimes stay-at-home moms, so they would cater to that demographic, what they thought that demographic wanted. And <laughs> the rest is history. I don't think they're doing too well these days. 
Um, co well, compared to where they were. But they're still going. And they wouldn't be if they weren't. But I love that part of the story. Uh, hey, Vaughn. I've been watching Real Housewives of New Jersey. It's slight better than hearing a bunch of rich white men sling mud at each other. Rich women ripping each other's wigs off. Yeah, you know, I used to enjoy those kind of programs. <laughs> used to watch those with Leah. They're ridiculous, but they're fun. It's same, kind of along the same lines as the tabloid. Um, how do I know these things? I watched the documentary. Documentaries make you smart, even the stupid ones. Inquiring minds want to know. Yeah, but this one is a, uh, you can see the trailer for it. Look up, um, I'm pretty sure it's called Scandalous. The story of the National Enquirer or something like that. I'm excited to see it. Uh, there's probably nothing that I don't already know from that original documentary, but doesn't mean I ain't gonna devour it. I love tabloids. I've always, I've always loved them. Um, but one interesting thing that it was the Inquirer that got that famous photo of Elvis in the coffin. <laughs> like, of course, it just made them in, infamous, and even people that were you know, chastising them, like, how could you be so sick to sneak, because press was not allowed anywhere near that funeral. Someone with it, and you, this was, what, the early 80s? When did when did Elvis die? I think early 80s, late 70s? I actually can't remember. I feel like it might be 79 or 80. But he, uh, you, you, so you got to imagine what the smallest, most covert camera on planet Earth would have looked like back then. <laughs> but someone went in there, with one of those uh, giant cameras and snuck two photos of the king. And they put it on the cover. <laughs> you didn't even have to buy the magazine to uh, or pick it up and flip through it to see it. And there he was. And a lot of people thought it was fake until the outrage from the family came out. Well, that was the real deal. So now you can see, uh, since I changed my burn tool, there's these differences in like tone. Like this, uh, maybe that's coming across, maybe it's not. But this is more gray. This one's more orange. I don't want that. So I'm going to actually desaturate the whole thing. And, oh, i got to blend that one back down too. And then I'm going to fade that color back up. And then it should be back to monochromatic. Some of my windows are popping up down here, so I'm going to pull them up there so you can see what I'm doing. This is not a pencil. I don't get it. No, it is not a pencil. Can you imagine Bob Ross watching this? Like, shoot, I tell you what. I believe in squirrel magic. <laughs> I think he's using Peapod Jr. squirrel magic. All right. Yeah, I don't know if that read clearly uh, in the feed you're getting, but now you can see it's all it's all brown. There's no like gray spots in there. Um, I don't know why I'm getting... Uh, that outline that's popping up just kind of looks. Oh, you know what? <laughs> that's funny. I realize you guys aren't seeing the uh, image anymore because I accidentally popped it out into its own window. So that'll pop in once again. So, now it's just back to more burning, but now I'm going to lighten it up because I don't want it to go back into those grays. Well, th the settings up here for the burn and dodge tools are what do that. So if you do a mid-tone, what I've been doing is a mid-tone and that gets it really dark, but you can see it's not, it's not keeping the tone of the overall color behind it um, so you got to play with it 
the shadow goes super dark, but it is preserving that tone. And you can play with the opacity too. I think highlight. No, see that does the same thing where it's graying it out. So I'm going to go with the shadow, but because that's way too dark, I'm going to turn the opacity down to about a third. It's still pretty dark, but kind of liking it actually. It's giving it that nice crisp. This is all so hard to do in, <laughs> well, it's not hard, but it's painstaking, like this kind of tone work and shadow work. Oh, did you panic when you uh, saw the gun disappear? <laughs> yeah, this little window here pops out, uh, but the software that I have capturing this is reading it by window. So... It's a little confusing, but it was always there. And there's always a way to get it back when you remember to save, which I eventually did. All right, I'm almost done with the base texture of this. And then I'm going to start adding all the fun stuff. Little diode wires and gauges. You can't have anything remotely steampunky without gauges. It's just not good business practice. Uh, but yeah, I, I read a poll today that asked people if they were more likely to tune into good news about the virus or bad news. And they admitted that they're more likely to tune into the bad news because they consider the good news to be no news, which isn't true. I mean, if they came out and said, well, we got a vaccine that's nipping this thing in the bud, or now that we've tested more people, we realize that the percentage of people dying is lower. I think that's news I'd love to hear. <laughs> But we're strange creatures, and the media knows this, and they feed off it. And if people are tuning that out, I think it's great, as long as they're going along with the quarantine for now. Yeah, I'm actually liking how dark this is getting on those edges. But I, I have noticed that we're starting to make up our own quarantine rules. <laughs> and even Inslee said, if you think you're going to throw yourself a party with 50, with 49 people, <laughs> I think you can. But people are kind of doing that. They're, they're like, oh, we, we're only, you know, I think a lot of, did Washington actually uh, dump that down to closer to 10? I know in more and more places, the event size has to be less than 10. So people would be like, well, there's only nine of us, so we're going ahead with this. Like, it, that's not how this works. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's, that's not the point it's not math and uh, I didn't hear anything about St. Patty's Day in terms of overall numbers across the country if people were if bars were empty well I guess a lot of them were closed but the ones that were open were they full I do keep seeing all this footage from Florida of packed beaches I just see them standing in the shallow water thinking, oh, that looks like a bowl of Corona soup. Um, yeah, all right, now I think I'm going to uh, start adding some of my elements here. I'm going to do an offset gauge down there. I'm going to go back to this a few circles here and there. These are basically boiler room uh, textures and elements. Six foot spacing. Uh huh. That's impossible to do in a lot of settings. Set. From what I've seen. <laughs> but. 
back to this. Oh, I accidentally uh, circles here and there. Turned on my own video. They, they, I didn't realize you were looking at me from so far above me. Corona chowder. <laughs> <laughs> Six foot space. Well, that's just grody. But it's kind of true, right? That's and Florida is like notorious for being a uh, from what a I heavy see. senior citizen population. I can't believe how many people oh, I accidentally, uh, got sick at that nursing home in Kirkland. Own video. I didn't realize you were looking at me from so. But I still keep hearing good news, or good-ish news from China. <laughs> people are going back to work. Hopefully that doesn't lead to round true, news. Right? Anyway, Florida's like we shall see. For being but yeah, I'm on team close yeah. everything. Close the entire world at this point. We've gone this far, and you know they're going to. Stop nickel and diming it and just close everything. I can't believe how many and force the banks to give everybody a mortgage holiday. Even if they have to just extend those contracts. I know, again, this is a lot of paperwork. It's not going to be easy to do, but what they're asking us to do is not going to be easy. And they can't ask us to do it and expect us to do it without them doing some unprecedented stuff their own selves in terms of stimuli. Let's see, why is that not... To give everybody a mortgage holiday, even if they have to just extend Burn in like it should. Contracts. I know. Again, this we is are hearing two Rons. Oh, is it? Is that still happening? What they're asking us to do is not going to be easy, and they can't ask us to do it and expect us to do it without them. I think I accidentally turned on my sound, but that should be fixed now. Yeah. Let me know if you're still hearing it. It shows that you can see me watching myself. We are hearing two Rons. Well, let me just get out of this window because it wasn't happening when I was over here. All right, let me know if that's fixed. Technology can't win with it. I'll tell you what. Uh, oh, it's even worse now? I think you guys are a couple seconds behind what I'm saying, so I'll give it a minute before I... Um, hmm. I don't know what to try to fix that. Oh, it is fixed. Okay. Good. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's about a five second, five or six second delay from what I'm saying to what you guys are hearing. <laughs> yeah, I chased all my, I chased all my buddies away. By the way, Christina, you should uh, post some of your work in that event page that I set up. Didn't look like anyone was taking me up on that except for Sarah. I think it's, if a ton of artists post in it, it'll get a lot of eyes. I'm not liking that. And I know a lot of people aren't buying art right now, but some people are. But more importantly, this uh, First Friday is gone <laughs> for the foreseeable future. And I think uh, if I can round up enough advertising dollars to put out a comment next month, I think the feature will, the main focus will be artists <laughs> and how to help them uh, in a way that's practical for everybody. Everyone's going to have to help everybody. We have to stimulate our own economy. The government is not going to fix this. Maybe they can't fix it, but they can help. But if we're just going to hoard and hide away and pretend all this is going to blow over. We're going to wake up in a very, very strange world. Um, oh, Sarah's already making sales from it. You see? This is working. 
I wish I'd make a sale against your point. Those pop-up signs would sell if I was able to do my, or those, I was going to do a pop-up show with the signs. Those things are so much cooler in person <laughs> than they are in the photos. I was really bummed that I wasn't able to do that. That was where I was putting all my time and effort into for a while. I got a show at the community, um, what's it called, community workspace in June. That's why I've been working on all these food-related pieces, but we shall see. But First Friday's dead for the foreseeable future. That's a lot of canceled art shows in an already pretty finicky lifestyle and <laughs> career choice. Or even hobby. Even just to have the money to continue your hobby at this point is in question. So I had to go back to that other setting. That's why all of a sudden it looks like there's bluish gray in there. I'll do the same trick where I ultimately come back and uh, monochromatize it. <laughs> Uh, could you get window space somewhere? Yeah, but people aren't really going and looking in windows right now. Well, the plan was, my plan was to get like in one of these little empty buildings downtown, hopefully, or like a hallway uh, <laughs> in one of these little plazas. Because these are not big pieces. I don't need much space, and they would really look cool in a small room but you know, no one's no one's going out right now not even to look in windows uh i need to get on there always in the market for our, oh yeah uh check it out katie just I, I think if you just look up well if you go to radar station it's the only event i've got on the books now it felt really strange to make an event for radar station i used that used to be my whole world <laughs> felt kind of good kind of weird um, but yeah, hopefully people will be adding to it. So I think it, it could be a cool thing. And apparently it's already starting to work for some people. There's a lot of jealousy in the art world. I used to be one of those guys until I realized that we're not really competing because we're not really doing the same thing. <laughs> Even if there's an artist that's very similar to your style. You're not really, it's not like most industries. There's a lot that goes into why somebody buys something or doesn't. If you display it, they might come. It's true. Well, you know what I'm trying to do uh, is a virtual art show, and it sounds like the museum might be working on something like that. And I'd love to be able to do it. I guess I don't need any dots down there since my... Well, yeah, why not? Um, I'd love to do it in actual, like, virtual reality. <laughs> but that may be over my head or over my budget. So I'm looking into ways of doing, like, uh, not just pictures, because that doesn't cut it. You like, There's something about that virtual gallery thing and I've seen some museums and uh, galleries that even before all this chaos they had put together like a virtual tour it's really a cool thing because you can zoom way up in high definition you can uh, you know you can see the tags but you can also read the information like you could put way you could put the Wikipedia entry on a piece of sculpture right next to it uh, and it's really cool no, this is war. <laughs> Stand corrected. But see that you're a good example, Christina, because um, I don't think you and I are creating exactly the same art. Certainly not your final show at Radar Station, which was the perfect final show at Radar Station. Um. <laughs> By the way, have you sold many of those pieces? Um, why is stuff not wanting to work right here? Got something selected that... Oh, I accidentally hit print. Good gravy. 
Tried the new 3D photos on Facebook. Um, no, I haven't. I know what you're talking about. I don't. I don't know if that would be right. What What I'm. What I want is to build like a gallery. What I want. It, what What's in my head is a a gallery that is floating in space. It's like a big spaceship. You can see windows and stars floating outside. <laughs> And you just walk in, and but it's an art gallery, and there's pictures, and then you move forward. Just like, think about, I guess, not so much virtual reality, but like uh, Google Street View. Like, imagine that, but inside. And then you see something, you just go over to it, and then it's a high-res image, and you can scan it. You can get really close and scan it as if you were standing in front of it. Look up the information on it, see the price tag, and... There's an option, like a clickable link to buy it if you want. But most importantly, you would just be able to easily see it and experience it in that sort of real space way, which is important. I'm actually just going to copy that and change the setting. One of my favorite things about digital painting, the cheating. <laughs> there ain't no cheating in art. Some people think there is. I've had this conversation many, many times with artists where they just they, they roll their eyes at digital uh, digital art. They don't see it as being uh, <laughs> legitimate, or they think it's it, something that anybody could do. It's like mm, there there are things that are easier, and there are things that are way more complex. But sit, sit any artist, like any painter, down at Photoshop, give them a Wacom tablet and Wacom pen and say, paint. <laughs> Find out really quickly. This isn't a thing that doesn't take talent or skill or effort or time. But there's no question. I mean, what are we, uh, we're not even at an hour and a half and I'm 75% done with this thing. I would not be nearly this far. I can paint a painting, like especially like a ray gun type thing. Um in acrylics in a couple of hours but it's not going to be nearly this rendered and but the other thing is more importantly this is it's a different art form i mean it's like saying the electric guitar isn't a real instrument <laughs> it's like you're still doing the same things you just have more options for like effects or tones or sounds acoustic you get acoustic you put a mic in front of it um it needed music notes what does that mean M2.5, what does that mean? You're a cheating heart. <laughs> cheating. You cheater. There ain't no cheating in art. Um, Let's see. Oh, Radar Station 2.5, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, that's basically what I was doing with Radar Station, was slowly turning it into a spaceship. There's got to be an easy way to do it. I just don't know what it is took me four days to figure out how to <laughs> do a video podcast. And then in the end, I wasn't able to do that video podcast. Oops. Um, let's see. What am I trying to do here? I need to I need to go back up to shadows and get these dark. There we go. It's kind of looking a bit like a donut, but hey, I like it. Maybe you can get them up in the VR radar in space telling you man I've got a vision for this <laughs> this floating space space skiff as we call them um now here's a, a place where I think I might well no that's not going to work see if I try to do a drop shadow here this is why these filters uh or effects I should say almost never work in these circumstances if I do a drop shadow here it's going to look great in a couple of spots. Well, that's an outer glow that I chose. Switch that to drop shadow. And I'll make the color match. Let's say I make it somewhere in there. And pull out the spread so it's coming on one side or the other. Now you can see that it looks pretty good. Um, let's see. Let me make that a little bit. Right here, and if I change the angle, looks great right there, and, and even better if I pan down 
the opacity. But <laughs> now you got drop shadow down here. Of course, I could separate those on uh, different layers. But it's stuff like that that keeps me uh, from using those. And instead, I'll just go paint them in myself. Typically, I'll do this on a, a layer in between. I don't usually label my layers. I know that makes it a little more complicated if you're trying to use this as any kind of tutorial. But this is the top layer, the middle layer between the dial or the uh, gauge and this ball right here, the gun itself. That's where I'm going to paint the drop shadow. And then you have more control over it. So obviously that looks stupid. But it won't once I give it a little bit of blur. Turn the opacity down first of all. So that it's not quite so dense. I'm going to turn it way down. Give it a Gaussian blur. Or Gaussian. I think it's Gaussian. It's a big level of con or a point of contention in the designer industry. Now you see immediately... It's starting to look a little better, but I'm still gonna, I'm gonna bump that opacity back up. I'll buy that. It's good enough. Yeah, let's give it a happy little drop shadow indeed. And then when you back it up, it all works well together. So I'm gonna flatten all of those and then merge that down. And you can play around that. I mean, obviously, the background color can be anything you want. It's so another thing that I love about digital paintings is how quickly you can change the entire hue. I mean, let's say I wanted that gun to look more silverish or uh, even plastic. And you just start adding blues into it or greens. You can make it look like anything you want. Like that looks more like a pewter. Uh, yeah, I kind of like the look of that, but that makes me want to change the background color to blue because I liked how that was contrasting against the brown there. Again, some of these keep trying to hide. So as easy as that, you can change the color of anything. I get why some people are a little hesitant to enjoy digital paintings. And the other thing about them, the big the biggest problem to me with digital paintings is you don't end up with an original piece. In order for you to <laughs> buy and enjoy and display this piece, I got to print it out. And why would I only print out one copy? That's no matter how I do it, whether it's a canvas print or an archival ink print, why would you only print out one? So there is that sort of special individual thing that you don't get with the digital painting. I understand all that, but I don't know. It's just a different it's a different thing altogether. It's a different way to create, it's a different way to display and sell your art. But I, I sell a lot of prints with this kind of art at, you know, ten, fifteen, thirty bucks a pop. That's just how you do it with this particular stuff. So now I'm going to add another layer and start adding some craziness. Shoot, let's get crazy. That's what Bob Ross would say. I'll tell you what. He never really gets crazy, though, does he? <laughs> it's always kind of disappointing um, when he just kind of draws a shack <laughs> and calls that getting crazy. I'm just going to start adding a bunch of little, like, hoses and tubes. And since this layer is now below this one, you can start painting down here. You can paint anywhere. It's all going to look right because if you turn it off, it looks ridiculous. But layers, it's all about how you stack your layers. And you can go as ridiculous as you want because if it's too much, you can always just delete them. Shoot. Yeah. I talk about it all the time, Christina. One of the things I miss the most about radar station is, is those slow nights sitting down there and watching Bob Ross. Oh, good memories. Never did really get the Bob Ross drink and draws 
to take off. Well, that doesn't make sense. His thumb's going to be sitting back there. I like how that looked, though. Um, maybe a couple of... There we go. I'm surprised that we never got that to take off. So weird how the drink and draws did so much better when I did them in my house. I mean, like 20 or 30 people show up every single time. We were lucky to get like five the ones at Radar Station. Those in the movies just never could quite get them to be as popular as some of the other things. Okay, now this is... Uh, that's too much chaos happening. Shoot, that's too crazy. The shack. <laughs> yeah, Caleb, that was your uh, <laughs> that was your drink uh, drinking game rule. Every time he paints a shack. <laughs> Do you remember what the phrase was? We were talking about this the other night. Uh, <laughs> thumb loop. Uh, the phrase that we decided we must never ever use because people would be far too intoxicated. Because he said it like every three seconds. I couldn't dial it up. Um, hmm, kind of like this, actually. I like this chaos. The thing I like about stuff that isn't really pretty is that it kind of seems more uh, utilitarian. I'm going to put some little plugs there to make that pop out a bit more. There. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there. It's got to be a whispery, breathy there. Yeah, no, you'd be dead of alcohol poisoning if you drank every time Bob Ross said there. <laughs> Shoot. I tell you what. One of these one of these episodes that I'm live painting, I'm just straight up coming on and doing my Bob Ross impersonation for two hours. Shoot, why not? Occasionally cut to a some footage of a squirrel. <laughs> Oops, that was on the wrong layer. Looking a little orange. I'm kind of curious about this uh, <laughs> average <laughs> 19 times per episode. That's an amazing average. But I'm kind of curious about this Netflix party. Um uh, Tom Foolery. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but Alex Haley and I have been talking about doing this fart house cinema <laughs> where we watch movies and either mock them, sort of like Mystery Science Theater, or we, you know, give them new dialogue. I'm looking forward to seeing if this might be a way to do it. I think it's all just chat for now. But what I like about it is that it syncs you up with the movie with everybody. That's one of the biggest hurdles that I've had in trying to get an online movie night going. It's just like, okay, everyone hit play now. And But if you're all on the same app, that eliminates that. I don't know why my drop shadow isn't showing up here. Uh, well, anyway. but So we'll look into that. Now, now then, I'm going to go these tubes. So one, one thing that I do a lot with these filters down here is don't let me miss the Bob Ross night. <laughs> okay, I'll keep you posted. Uh, I Sometimes you can do a bevel and emboss, and these will just instantly look like little hoses. Let me see if I can figure out. Oh, I'm on the wrong. That's why nothing's working. I'm on the wrong layer here. I need my hose layer. What a hoser. Um, so now I go back down to my bevel and emboss. And because it, like an Edgar Roo, I always do these hoses. <laughs> and it just takes forever to individually shade and highlight them. I still do sometimes, but sometimes... I stumble upon the right. This isn't doing what I want it to do. Maybe I'm thinking of a different. Uh, filter here. Let's see. Is it contour? Okay, 
it's definitely it's definitely bevel and emboss. There is an app for that. <laughs> what is it? What setting? I haven't done this effect in a while, but it's so worth it to uh, play around with this. Oh, I see. It's not. I'm giving it a stroke and boss. That's not what I want at all. Opacity is down to zero. <laughs> That's going to affect it, but I'm still not seeing anything. Boss. Outer bevel. I swear it's inner bevel, but... Oh, that's it. See, the effect that it's doing in the... Oh, there it is. It's One of these opacities is still down too low. That's one of them. That's the other one. And the highlight is... You can kind of see what I'm going for, even though it's... Oh, that's the other thing. That should be on normal. There you go. Now you see that it's kind of got these little... shadow and highlight things happening. I don't know if that's going to read well enough. That's pretty subtle. All right, well, I'm just going to go in and do it manually then. It's quick enough. But yeah, what my hope for uh, Fart House Cinema would <laughs> be, I can't say it without laughing because I'm eternally nine. Uh, we were just about to really start trying to do this, that radar station. And I'd like to get some of the comedians that we've had come through radar station to do what... Uh, there's there's a couple of different things I want to do. One of them is a mystery science theater live, or a mystery science theater type live broadcast. But I don't want anyone to have rehearsed it. I want it to be 100% improv, <laughs> which would be pretty hard and be consistently funny. But that's the fun of it. Like, even bombing would be funny. There you go. Now you can see what I was trying to go for. Um, I've had that happen almost automatically with the right settings on it, but it really looks coily now. <laughs> Coily, remember that one, Christina? <laughs> no springs. Uh, the other thing I want to do is where, and I'm really excited about this one. I want to take a movie and just play it, and and again have you know a panel of whoever comedians, local actors, or just people that just just want to try their hand at crack and wise. But I want the movie audio to be completely down, and then the entire shtick is that. You just pick your characters, your main characters, <laughs> and hope for the best. And you just make up the dialogue. And I think it'd be fun to pair it with some sort of musician, even if it's a cappella, so that you could have the soundtrack. <laughs> this, it, it, the whole thing would be uh, completely a train wreck. Uh, oh, the coily one? No, that was... What was that about? No, it was about this... I think it was about springs. Like, literally about springs. <laughs> like, the steel industry put out a... Uh, you know, don't forget to <laughs> be thankful that the world has springs. I'm pretty sure that it was simply to get people to appreciate the springs thing and maybe it was a union thing or like i said and in uh, some <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> no springs you realize that is the equi equivalent <laughs> oh boy i better wrap this up the equivalent of flatulence abode theater i do you say that like it's a shameful thing one of my favorite things about having Radar Station is that I could do whatever I wanted and call it whatever I wanted. And I was looking so forward to being the only place in town 
that would have anything, any official event that had the word fart in it. <laughs> it's a tremendous thrill for uh, the nine-year-old and me. I mean, come on, who else is going to proudly advertise Fart House Cinema? But we just never got to it. I booked 100 events <laughs> in the last six months of Radar Station's life, and I'll never, uh, I'll never understand how they all got pulled off. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good about all this. You, you kind of see how that's changed colors here a bit because I used the wrong, well, not the wrong, but uh, a very peculiar setting on the burn and dodge tool, but I kind of like it. And I'm thinking that I need to darken this whole part over here, but it's almost done in terms of the overall drawing. So I'm going to merge all of these and then I can just come in here and check out this article next Netflix party the my circle app lets you stream a movie to several people yeah see the thing is I, I I'm pretty sure that I'll, I will read that later TJ I'm pretty sure that uh, the Netflix party doesn't doesn't support like video where you know someone can be seen either giving you commentary or I'm gonna reset all those colors I decided either someone's giving you commentary or uh, you know tidbits or crack and wise that that's what would be necessary for it to be utilized for Far House Cinema <laughs> but uh, so we'll see I'll look into all that Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of color to this. Not a ton before I grain it and add some filters over the top of it. My Circle app lets you stream... Oh, all right, backed up too far here. I already read that. Yeah, there's got to be something that can do it. I mean, even this could do it. What I'm doing right now, like this window could be a movie. And we're all on either Google Hangouts or, or here, on a pri. I think we could do it on a private Facebook page without getting some sort of copyright strike. I could be wrong. Could be that uh, anytime it goes through YouTube or Facebook in general, it's going to, you know, it's going to detect that copyrighted audio, if not video. There are bots out there constantly scanning for stuff that don't belong to you. I can't even use my own music in my videos, the Bloody Oranges music, because it's copyrighted through... Uh, it's not licensed, so I don't have to like pay anything through like BMI or ASCAP or anything like that, but it's not it's like recognized as copyrighted music, so I can't, <laughs> I can't use it on my own stuff without having to... Uh, I don't have to pay, but I wouldn't be able to monetize that video. I love me a little bit of turquoise against gold or brown with these steampunk paintings, especially. That is always a good combo. And I'm tempted to do one more gauge right over there. And since it will take two seconds, I think I'm going to play the, play the movie on your TV with the camera behind you. <laughs> that's the old school. That's how uh, we used to do stuff. And that's kind of how I've been trying to do some of this podcast stuff is like that old school. But, um, but it's sure nice if you can have good audio quality and good video quality. But we'll do what we can. We'll figure it out. Because I think it's a fun idea. And until we're out of this lockdown situation, <laughs> we're going to have to come up with ways to uh, entertain ourselves and still feel connected. It's a big part of 
what we're suffering through right now is that feeling of isolation. Even I think even the loners, like I'm a loner, but this is weird. <laughs> loners can spend a lot of time alone if it's on their own accord. Caleb called turquoise. Oh, he thought that that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm a one-trick pony, Caleb. <laughs> hey, there's no orange in it. Yet. <laughs> you guys are making your own drinking game, aren't you? <laughs> what color will Ron add to his ray gun painting? What will he be painting? A ray gun or a robot? Or a, a rare robot holding a ray gun night? You know, I get it. Laugh at old man efforts. <laughs> All right, there's something about the tippy top of that tippy top that's not making... I won't say it again. Uh, oh, this needs to be darker now because everything else is in contrast. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I bet Ron has turquoise. Oh, dear. I'm pretty easy. I bet that uh, I'd be as easy to make a drinking game, too, with my, uh, I mean, I'm a simple man. <laughs> That's funny. I want to know the rules. I want to know everything that <laughs> you guys have thought up for this Watch Ron Paint drinking game. I's not as drunk. Okay. <laughs> It's hard for me to even read that. So I might be. Uh, now see, I might be getting a little too. Ooh, as Bob Ross would say. Ooh, that's nice. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, Bobby. Um, yeah. I think that's a little better on that. And still a little. There's something altogether incongruent. Drink every time he adds a gauge. Hmm. Well, you know, <laughs> if you really want to get plastered, drink every time I add grain. Or I was just thinking every time I impersonate Bob Ross. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Yeah, I'm glad that you can all have fun at my expense. Um, okay, I'm going to try to separate these from background a bit there. They should look more like this, like these coils or whatever the hell any of these things are. And again, that's what I love about sci-fi stuff. You don't have to know what you're making. Um, I'm just going to duplicate that. Sorry, I feel like I'm breathing very heavily into the microphone. <laughs> now I'm self-conscious. Like drink every time he breathes into the microphone. Let's see. That isn't. I'm not liking that. Well, I'll just do the desaturation trick again. Lighten those up. Uh, yeah. Now one last. Oh, I can't desaturate. Well, I can do that. I can re. I can recolor the turquoise. <laughs> oh, you get the drink again, because. Uh, I'm going to do the turquoise again. And if orange was in there, then you might want to drink, because I think I'm going to ramp this a little more orangey. That'll really make that turquoise pop. <laughs> Shoot! Leave anything out. I'm going to get alcohol poisoning. All right. Bring back in the turquoise. <laughs> I mean, come on, look how good it looks against that color. I'm actually going to make it more uh, powerful. I need more turquoise. It's not turquoisey enough. There we go. Shoot. I tell you what. Uh, so, Christina, uh, I'm taking it that you are now, are you unemployed? Are you on, are you just waiting for Wally's to call you and let you know when the coast is clear? Are they letting people go? What's happening in the bar world right now? Okay, I'm surprised you guys can hear Comet. 
She's downstairs. Yeah, she's singing. She's crying. <laughs> she does this, like, uh, you know, the call to all the tomcats. <laughs> and so they all come around the yard. It's a little, uh, it's busy around here, cat-wise. <laughs> okay, so I'm almost, now th this should definitely be a drinking, uh, a drinking game cue. When Ron adds the grain, <laughs> you know I'm going to grain it. And I like a lot of, a lot of grain, so I'm going to go 10 here. It's just an add noise filter. You ever wonder why all my stuff is grainy? This is why, or this is how. Why? I couldn't tell you. I just love it. I love that look. And this is how I started falling in love with digital, is getting some of these grainy textures that I used to like with uh, watercolors uh, or certain analog. Waiting for the coast to be clear, not doing anything in the meantime. Well, now's a great time to get some art up into that virtual art gallery. I don't like how that leaves all that light in between. And since I already filtered it, I'm going to have to kind of do some surgery here. Actually, what I'll do is let's see, I'll grab this. Shoo. Just squeeze on in here. And that I do this a lot. We just kind of scooch <laughs> and just make it sort of fit. And man, I really can't get used to these new controls. It's frustrating. I really think Photoshop fixed something that wasn't broken there. perfect but I can add a little bit of shadow we'll have some shadow in there good gravy it's harsh yeah the bar industry I wonder which one of those there's no way they can all survive it I got a feeling I happen to know a couple that might just end up going teats up at the end of all of this. I doubt Wally's will be that one. Apply for unemployment? Yeah, apply for everything. <laughs> There's going to be a lot to apply for here soon. Okay, now, the other thing that I do all the time, maybe even too much. I'm going to show you my secret. I'm going to go to the Googles. And I'm going to search. Oh, yeah, I forget. You're not seeing anything. I got two monitors here, so you're not seeing anything there. I'm going to search old paper. I do this all the time with either old paper textures or cardboard or sometimes even cement textures. I have a whole library of textures that I took, um, just photos around town, because a lot of these, I've even seen my own photographs pop up in some of these uh, places, and they'll have these little watermarks on them. I was like, like, I guarantee these places that are watermarking this do not actually own <laughs> the pieces of art that they are copywriting. It's hilarious. So anyway, I'm just going to copy this right out of the uh, browser and paste it on top. Now, it's tiny, but it doesn't matter because all this is going to be, you can blow it up. I'm going to cover it over the whole thing. Now, the rest is going to be up to your layer modes. I tend to go with multiply, and then you can fade it down. And you can see that it adds all this texture. It can add interesting color. Sometimes it, it takes too much color away. And so I'm going to desaturate that so you get the texture without the color. But that's still too dark, so you can just kind of scroll down through them and see what does what. You never know until you uh, 
that gives you a better view of the actual layer that we're multiplying onto it. And well, that's kind of cool. So this is it's just a way to get texture. Usually, mostly in the background, the overall thing. Um, which one did I like? I think I like that one, but I'm going to pan it down just a bit. And I'm going to add that same grain to that layer so it all looks more cohesive. I'm also going to blur it. And, I don't know, sometimes I've been really enjoying giving my paintings these little st strokes or outlines around it. I'm going to see how that looks with this one. I think it's going to be a little too busy for that to be a good idea. I don't know. I always like it. <laughs> but yeah, that one's pretty crazy. But you see what, uh, like that, if I was painting that, those strokes take forever. <laughs> it's like half the time in the painting. And, you, and here, you just do it. But I think ultimately that's going to be too much. So... Yeah, I think, I think maybe I'll burn in some of these edges here a bit. I still feel like there needs to be something. I'll try a drop shadow behind that gun. There needs to be something popping it off from the the background more. So I'll select that dark blue color. And... Stretch it out, but make it barely. You don't need a lot of drop shadow. You don't need it to be too contrasty. See, that makes that makes a pretty big difference. And, oops. I'm going to bump that down a bit. And burn this out. too harsh but yeah yeah I think that's probably about it one more light pass down there pretty subtle and now I'll do the digital version of my uh, signature, which is also easier than painting it. If you found this enjoyable and you uh, can afford a few nickels, patreon.com slash tales from the space bot. Did I put that on here? Oh, yeah, it's right there on the screen. Look how fancy this is. <laughs> it's not like when I'm doing analog paintings and I have to uh, tape printed pieces of paper out. It's not without its charms. I hate that it defaults to the lorem. It's some now. I got lots of settings in this brand new Photoshop that I have to manipulate before I'm thrilled with it. Ugh, like that all different things that I'm not used to. Anyway, I'll be doing probably a weekly art demonstration in one form or another. Uh, I think the next one I might. Oh, that's irritation. I'd like to do a live demonstration of one of my signs. I'm going to get back into doing a few more of those, even though I didn't get to do my pop-up show. <laughs> those are so much fun to do. It might be my favorite art to make. Why do I keep doing that? Oh, I feel like Photoshop got really overzealous with this last update. Like, let's change most things. <laughs> Not a few... I'll probably end up loving it and 
wondering how I got by without it for so long. But even that, like those little pop-up, oh, it's irritating. You love the signs. Thank you. I, I love those signs, too. And But like I said, they're one of those things that I think you really have to see in person to really want to take one home. But we'll see. Um, where is that box? Sometimes I forget what this is why it's a good idea to name your layers. Sometimes these heavy uh, or big complicated compilations or compositions can have like 30 layers in them. You definitely want to label them then. When I'm doing Ed Guru, that can happen because each panel is on a separate layer. Sometimes depends on what the background is. All right, now I'm going to add my uh, that same grain, the noise, and blur it. And that looks like a painting to me. If I do say so, my darn self. Let me see if I can put that in preview mode. And well, that doesn't really do anything except hide all the controls. And then there's the controls. Well, there you are. There's a uh, two-hour digital painting. Not terribly complex one, but I thought I'd get on and show you how I do these types of paintings patreon.com slash tales from the space pod and if you didn't check out yesterday's irish podcast it's uh archived on youtube at the uh the comet just look for the comet magazine i don't have enough subscribers on there yet to have my own personalized domain so but check that out it was fun and thanks for tuning in we will see you all soon have a good night the awkward time where I find the streaming button and hit stop and say goodbye.